Get ready, because this is going to be a bumpy one today. As always, I'm Jay from j and and I'm going to be doing a theory on Disney's The Little Mermaid and one of my personal favorite, Moana. You may have seen me in a few videos of Nerdies and a glimpse of me and Moana, but if you haven't, make sure to check those out. Also, check out my channel while you're at it. I will leave a link down in the description down below. Now, I know that these movies have little to nothing in common, and they take place in two different parts of the world. However, I believe I may have found a connection between the two movies. First, I will explain the stories of both movies and then give a theory. That's how nerdy normally does it, right? Okay, good. Let's get right to it then. First, we'll start with The Little Mermaid since that one came out first. Disney's The Little Mermaid came out in 1989 and it's about a mermaid who longs to be in the human world. She falls in love with the prince she sees dancing while she is examining a ship. She's been told multiple times that she isn't allowed in the human world because they might see her and become a danger to her. Ariel, the mermaid, however, simply doesn't give a flying seashell about that. She's a stubborn 16 year old that just defies her father's wishes because she wants to know what it's like to be in a human world. So she goes to see a witch to turn her human for three days. In exchange for her wish, she gives the witch her voice because all she can think about is being with Prince Eric. The sea witch turns her into a human and watches closely to see that her restrictions are met. Ariel is supposed to kiss the prince by the third day, but is not able to speak nor write to him. So it's quite difficult for her, as you can imagine. On top of that, the prince is on the search for her the entire time after she saved him from a shipwreck. However, all he knows is her voice and not what she looks like, so can you imagine her frustration? So there's plenty of opportunities where he could kiss her, but it is sabotaged by the sea. The sea witch is trying everything to ensure she can rock Ariel across the coast so she can say she has royalty in her collection of poor unfortunate souls who couldn't pay the price. Then the sea witch comes to land in disguise but with Ariel's voice. This entraps Prince Eric in a trance after realizing the voice and they set up to be married the next day. Of course, this breaks Ariel's teenage heart and she starts to give up. However, the homies, you know, Sebastian, a crab, flounder, a blue angelfish, and Scuttle, the seagull, you know, they all go to help her figure out what's going on with the prince. They find out that the woman the prince is set to marry is actually the sea witch and tell Ariel about it. However, when Ariel takes action, it's too late. Ariel has turned back into a mermaid. Then there's this huge battle scene between the sea witch, Ariel, Ariel's dad, the prince, Eric, etc, etc. I won't spoil anything else in this movie, but you all should know what happened in the end. If not, go check it out. What are you waiting for? Now, let's get to the better of the two, Disney's Moana. It's set in the Pacific Islands. It's about a chief's daughter that shares the same name as the film. She is a girl that is in love with the ocean and also has a duty to her island. However, her father does not allow her to go to sea. She is told multiple times growing up that she is not allowed into the water. Moana is able to sneak a boat off of the island around the time she is 16 and just like Ariel, defying her father's wish. Her boat ends up crashing and she ends up in a lot of trouble after she returns to land. Her grandmother, who is the village crazy lady, has always been supportive of her love for the water. So she shows Moana the ancestry of their island. It turns out, they were voyagers. We were voyagers! We were voyagers! We were voyagers! Yes, I just said that, but thanks again, Moana. Anyways, her grandmother gives her the heart of the goddess of Tefiti. Tefiti is the goddess that gives growth to the islands and without her heart she is unable to help the islands. The grandmother tells her about Maui and the ocean choosing her. She tells her she needs to go get Maui, the demigod of the wind and sea. It's actually Maui shapeshifter, demigod of the wind and sea, hero of men. I interrupted from the top, hero of men. Go. To return the heart since he is the one who stole it in the first place. Maui at first tricks Moana and steals her boat to get off of the island as he has been trapped there for years and years and years and uh... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Even more years. So, Moana gets help from the ocean to rejoin him and they face difficulties, including coconut warriors, known as Kakamora, the realm of monsters which no human bodies can enter, and Tika, a huge lava monster that does not let anyone, like, at all close to Tafiti's body. Like, no, don't even try. They somehow get past Taka after Maui has a I give up moment. Taka is coming at Moana after Moana visits Tafiti's resting place and notices she is gone. And for the rest, my lips are sealed. Go check it out. Make sure to comment down below which of these two movies you enjoyed better. I personally love Moana better, obviously, since I was in the movie when I was younger, you know. And and I know Nerdy is a fan of both, so which do you all like better? 
Alright, back to the video. With this theory, we look at two pretty overlooked characters. And this all comes from the after credit scene in Moana. Remember how I said Moana ends up in the Realm of Monsters? Well, in the Realm of Monsters, they end up meeting this huge shiny crab named Tamatoa. Tamatoa is addicted to the finer and shinier things in life. You know, sort of like me. So, what does he have to do with anything? Well, in the after credit scene, Tamatoa makes a sly comment. A comment that connects two movies. Tamatoa says, as he is stuck on his back, and I quote, Still upside down here. Just need a little push. <sighs> Can we be real? If my name was Sebastian, and I had a cool Jamaican accent, you'd totally help me. You would, you know you would. This immediately makes everyone think about The Little Mermaid's Sebastian. So my question is, does that mean these two stories have a similarity in at least one character? How would Tomatoa know about Sebastian if he was not one, told about him, or two, even met him? Exactly. Remember that sea witch from The Little Mermaid? Well, Ursula the Sea Witch has been known across the sea for giving people what they want. So what if Ursula gave Tamatoa exactly what he wanted? I know it seems far-fetched right now, but just hear me out. In both The Little Mermaid and Moana, there is always truth to every song. I'll give you examples if you don't believe me. In The Little Mermaid, Ariel sings Part of Your World, where she expresses how much she wants to be in the human world. In Moana, Moana sings I Am Moana, where she expresses her love for herself and her ancestors. Also in The Little Mermaid, Ursula has a song called Poor Unfortunate Souls where she explains her work and how her pricing system works. She gives in full details how she helps people and if they don't pay up, she has to rake them across the cold. Then in Moana, Tamatoa also has a song called Shiny, where he spills how much he loves to be glam and gorgeous because the fish follow anything shiny and he eats that way. So let's take a look at both of these songs. First up, Poor Unfortunate Souls. Ursula literally says in the song, I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They weren't kidding when they called me well a witch. Then skip ahead to the song and she says, I've mended all my ways, repented, and seen the light, and made a switch. Yes. And honestly, it's been proven true. She was honest throughout her transaction with Ariel, so I can see that she is different from how others describe her in the movie. Then, we hear her say, I use it on behalf of the miserable, lonely, and depressed. The it refers to the magic that she uses on her poor unfortunate souls. So Ursula is being completely honest with Ariel, telling her her past and her reasons for helping people. But what about the pricing? Well, she's honest about that too. Ursula says to Ariel, Someone couldn't pay the price, and I'm afraid I had to rake them across the gold. Yes, I've had that odd complaint but on the whole, I've been on the same. This should already tell Ariel that if she doesn't pay the price negotiated, <laughs> she will be punished. So she knows her risks. So Ursula is proven to be highly honest in her song to Ariel. So why wouldn't it be taken seriously? Now let's take a look at Tamatoa's shiny song. In Shiny, Tamatoa says to Moana and his story and why he always looks so beautiful. He straight up tells Moana that Well Tamatoa hasn't always been this glam I was a drab little crab one Telling her that he wasn't always shiny. He was a doll and like an average crab. Skip ahead a bit in the song and he says Don't you know, fish are dumb, dumb, dumb They chase anything that good us to show how he gets his food and how he feels about the fish in the sea. And he's not wrong, is he? Fish are attracted to shiny things, which is exactly why they're attracted to fish hooks. The shine of the hooks draw them in, and the food on the hooks cause them to bite. That's why it works. Then he exposes Maui's story in the song by saying, Maui later reveals in the movie that he was abandoned by humans and tossed in the sea, where the gods accepted him and turned him into a demigod. So there is also truth in Tamatoa's song. But what do the songs have to do with anything? It's the first line of each song that I'm concerned about. The first line of Poor Unfortunate Souls is... I admit that in the past I've been a nasty... And the first line in Shiny is... Well, Tamatoa hasn't always been this glam... So what if... Just what if, get ready, about to get your minds blown here, Ursula is the one that turned Tamatoa into what he is when Moana meets him. It isn't too far-fetched if you think about it. We already have a confirmed bridge between the two movies and we know that both of them are honest villains. So I know there may have been a question of what Tamatoa's price may have been. Ursula was known to give prices for the circumstance, the person was and the wishes they had. So what if Ursula told Tamatoa to collect Maui's hook? What if that was his payment. Maui claims it was because Maui ripped off his leg, but what if it was for a different purpose? What if it was to become glam? Well, there's so little time and so many questions. So that's unfortunately gonna wrap up today's video. Make sure to comment down below your favorite part of the video or your favorite between the two movies. If you haven't already, become a part of the Nerd Army. By doing these four simple steps, make sure you do it. Subscribe, hit that bell button, 
like this video and comment down below when you're done. Also become a part of the Daydreamer family by doing the same exact thing that you did to Nerdy's channel. You can just go to my last video and do the same procedures. So like the Daydreamer family, Kay and myself always say, never stop daydreaming and always keep your head held high. We'll see you guys on my channel or in the next video. Peace. If you want a shout out, here's how to get one. Click the subscribe button. Make sure to turn on your post notifications and hit that like button, but don't forget to comment. Then boom, you will get a post notification shout out.